Now, this week, we're going to learn from small businesses that have changed to survive the recession. Well, you know, they say that the kitchen is the heart of the home. For some people, perhaps. <laughs> well, Jay Emery went into business making ovens and pots, and now he's branched out and makes houses too. He's been telling Rob Pitham all about it. My name's Jay Emery. I'm the managing director of Dingley Dell Enterprises, a small manufacturing business here in the West Midlands. We make things like pizza ovens, large architectural pots and planters, uh, wood-burning garden heaters, and this amazing African pothouse. And we find that the whole time we have to diversify just to stay in business and survive. Well, the business is 10 years old now, and we started off with the idea of making garden heaters. My wife bought me um, a garden heater, we lit it. It was one of the imported ones that fell apart. And I thought to myself, great idea, let's try and improve it. So we improved it. I took a patent out on that manufacturing method. Um, and then from there, people wanted to cook, so we developed some pizza ovens. From the pizza ovens, I thought, right, OK, that's going to have a life expectancy. So then we started making large architectural pots, and I thought that was going to be the big business. Um, and really, from there, using the balloon, the African pothouse was the culmination of that. Jay's a non-stop worker who's constantly coming up with ideas to develop his business. For the last few years, he's been looking for the next step up. And this is it. Jay's gone from making those small chimneyas to building an entire house. And Jay, the amazing thing is that the technology is exactly the same, isn't it? It's the same construction method. That's exactly right. I mean, the 10 years ago when we started making the burners, uh, we just took a balloon and built over the top of it. And all we do now is take a much bigger balloon. Uh, the technology has moved quite considerably since then, but this is the result of it, yeah. So the incredible thing is you've now gone from supplying garden ornaments essentially to being a house builder. That's what I like to think of myself. I'm now into uh, construction, aren't I? Um, and that's really where we want to go. So we, we see a market for this in the uh, UK leisure market. So if you want to build a garden office or if you want to have a hobby room or if you want to have a hot tub room or a snooker room in your garden, then this size structure anybody can build in the UK provided it's two meters away from their boundary fence. And that's fantastic and you don't need planning permission for it. Within our market plan, we've clearly defined third world housing um, and low cost third world ha housing. Slightly different specification to this, but yeah, the same concept. And that really, I see, is a global solution to third world housing problems. The domes, made from fiberglass reinforced concrete, can be built at the rate of 10 every 10 days. They're more environmentally friendly because they use far less material than a conventional home of this size would. They cost around 15 to 20,000 pounds in the UK, but because of cheaper labour costs, a fraction of that in the third world. And we're talking about diversification, but really all the kind of diversifying that your company's done, it's just, it's all in your head, isn't it? You just keep thinking. Yeah, I react to demand, basically. I come up with an idea, and then unfortunately, you don't always have the time to wait for people to bring you the money. You just have to have the gumption to think, yeah, I can do this and go for it. And that's what I've done. I've built this building because I said I could do it. It's built, I've proved that I could do it. Now we'll take it to market. Jay's just signed his first order to build some of these abroad because a hotel in Thailand is going to be made completely of these dome houses. Diversifying has been a good way through the recession for him. And tomorrow I'll be looking at one business which has found another way through difficult times by moving into an area that's recession proof. Fascinating stuff, that. And, Tom, I know you were watching that uh, with some interest as well. Tom DeLay, who's the chief executive of the Carbon Trust, he's our guest of the day here on Working Lunch. And it does make you think that, uh, about house building and the contribution that that can make to global warming because it potentially is a very large emitter of carbon dioxide. It is. I mean, buildings account for almost half of our carbon emissions in one way, shape or form, from the, the offices to the large public buildings that we enjoy as a public amenity to the homes that we live in. So, yes, buildings are absolutely crucial. Uh, it's important for us to build new buildings to a much better standard using far fewer materials, using the right materials, using much less waste. But it's also important for us to learn to refurbish the old buildings that we're going to have for many decades to come. And this was an argument that was going on with our viewers, in fact, over the last couple of weeks. Indeed. Which is better, new? or old. Uh, do you think some of the uh, techniques that Rob saw there might be... Uh, absolutely, hmm? absolutely. And we've got to try new things. We need innovation in the building space as much as we need innovation in power generation or any other part. We need new technologies, we need them to come down in cost, we need them to show they work. That was a great example. All right, Tom, thank you. More from you a little bit later. Thank Bye. you.